a lot of what he talked about sounds great, but that's really where I think it ends for me. Tesla is a data collection company. I always enjoy a good performance. I think they're an AI company. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today is October 14th, 2024. You're listening and watching the Daily AI Show Live. And today we're going to be talking about Tesla. We'll talk about their recent We Robot uh, event that they had last week. But we're also going to be talking about whether Tesla is, you know, if they're not a car company. We'll talk about what they're currently doing. Are they really moving more towards AI? Obviously, that's the idea of the show. But also, it was an underperforming event in terms of stock prices and things like that. You have other companies like Uber who consider this to be actually a success for them. We'll get into why Uber was excited about the We Robot event um, and, and everything else. Today, we have Jimmy, Andy, Beth, and I'm Brian. We'll see if anybody else comes in the door. And before we go any farther, just know that you can join us every single weekday at 10 a.m. Eastern. The best place for you to get the comments in and, in and be part of the conversation, and a lot of times we'll bring those comments into the, the show, is actually on YouTube. So if you go over to YouTube and you happen to have the time, any weekday, 10 a.m. Eastern, you can join the conversation. So if you have anything to say about uh, Tesla, you can jump over there and uh, we will bring it in. So welcome to all of our folks that are coming in in the comments. You can go over to the dailyishow.com and every single week, we're going to test this out right now, every single week, we uh, put out a newsletter. It just went out yesterday morning. It was episode or edition 19. I would say episode, but it was the 19th edition of our newsletter. Uh, it's going strong. It's growing week over week over week. We have tons of new people coming in and subscribing to it. So if you want to be part of that, if you want to get more than you can get on the show, um, then just hit this QR code you see on the screen and um, you'll get all signed up for it. So super easy. Uh, no problem at all. Okay, so welcome everybody. Welcome back from the weekend. I hope everybody had a good one. Uh, I I spent mine um, going back up and down ladders as I undid what we had to do for the hurricane. Uh, it's one of those things that you know as you're putting up the um, up the ladders and up the the shutters with every one that we were doing late last week. Me and my uh, neighbor Jason would say, "You know, these have to come back down, right?" Yeah, they got to come <laughs> at some point. They all got to come back down. So that's what happened yesterday. I'm a little sore, but I'm excited to be here. And if it looks slightly different uh, to all of our uh, listeners and watchers, it's because today is officially the first day that we move over from StreamYard to Restream. So thank you to Restream for uh, putting together a nice product. They're not sponsoring us, so I don't mean thank you in that way. Uh, but I do mean uh, they put together a good product and, and Beth says, do it, Restream. You should definitely uh, sponsor us. Um, but let's get into the topic of the day, which is Tesla. They had this event last week. I will be honest with you, probably because of the kind of week I was having storms. I had no prior knowledge to this. It quite literally showed up on my YouTube TV screen and like, this is happening in three hours. I think it was like maybe Thursday night, um, but East Coast time, and it, it, it was started an hour later. So I didn't even look at it till uh, the morning. Um, and, uh, you know, I was interested to see what they did. It seemed like a very slick, you know, Google-esque Tesla type, Apple type event. I mean, Tesla had basically, from what I could tell, had used like the whole Warner Brothers backlot essentially for this big introduction about um, their cyber taxis. Uh, the, how does he say Robovan? He doesn't say Robovan. Ro yeah, he said Robovan. Yeah, yeah Robovan. What? At the Robovan, what? which would totally make more sense. But anyway, that's that's another, we'll talk about that. So, and then they had the Optimus robots out there, which I will talk about how they immediately disappointed me. Uh, but that's something that that comes up quite a bit. We talk about, I can say already, Jimmy's like, yeah. Um, so let's dive into it. I don't know, where do you want to guys get started? Because I, I kind of thought maybe it'd be, it'd be good to just quickly set the stage of what, what does Tesla even do right now? Because I'm not sure that everybody actually kind of knows, but I want to look this up as well. And you could basically break it down into four sections. We know they, they make cars. Right. So there's the S and the Y and the three and the cyber truck and all that. But um, what was it? Solar City? Was that the name of the company that they eventually rolled into Tesla? And so Tesla makes, you know, your rooftop solar panels that are the that they're actual look like tiles. Um, and they have their um, battery like system, right? Their mega packs and things like that. They don't even just they don't do that just residentially. They do that commercially where they've helped out cities and things like that with their 
battery solutions. Then they had their entire charging network, which in itself could be its own business. Um, I got very excited just a few weeks ago when my Chevy Bolt uh, now became available to use the Tesla supercharger network. That's massive, massive. In fact, I'll be taking the Bolt up to Georgia in a few weeks. And um, one of the reasons my family feels really, really good about it, I would have done it anyway, but just that cherry on top is now that I can stop in any Tesla supercharger with an adapter and use it. So their charging network is massive. And then their fourth and final, which is now escaping me, um, is uh, their services department, which I think we kind of already know, but I mean, obviously they're servicing their vehicles. They have lease programs. Tesla, don't forget, does not have a right to repair. So if your Tesla breaks, Tesla's the only person that could do it. Tesla can and has bricked cars that people have bought in their own garages and driveways. So interesting and not like buying a Ford or something like that, where Tesla has a lot more control over the vehicles uh, because of the software systems. So all that to say, those are the things they're doing right now. And then we see Reboot Robot event. And it really feels more like an AI event, which is why we wanted to have this conversation today. So let's get your guys' reactions first on the event and what you saw. And let's get into, you know, the AI side of things. And and is Tesla, would we even call Tesla a car company? Is that even correct? Or are they an AI company? Are they a robot company? What? How do we define Tesla in the next two to three years? Well, um, I, first of all, would say I always enjoy a good performance. <laughs> um, and this, like you said earlier, uh, this definitely what I would call a slick video. Um, <clears throat> they did a great, uh, sh you know, song and dance, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you, you, it's on, it's on the backlog set. So uh, yeah. it's literally, it's literally prepared, right? Yeah. It's so, lit. It's lit. It's got the good, it had the, uh, yeah. glossy, uh, streets with the rain on them. Everything. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it's definitely a show. Um, and, uh, I'll go into later on that, but because it was a show, I will give them a little bit of slack on the other issues that we'll talk about or the other, the reactions. Okay. okay. Um, uh, I, I enjoyed the show. Uh, it's cool stuff. So cool stuff is all goes, uh, over well. Uh, but for the question of whether, what kind of company Tesla is, it's a vertical integration company. They make they make a product for consumers they make all the supporting products for uh for those other products they provide all the services and force all the services for that product uh to me it's a overall subscription service to a uh to a hardware set right whether you generate your power with tesla whether you store your power with tesla whether you use that power to charge your transportation vehicles and eventually or their hope is that you will then uh integrate their robotics and ai into the process but i i don't i wouldn't identify them as we make x i think it's more about um we he wants to create a uh a vertical supply chain that every single portion is controlled by them or as much as possible. Um, this could lead to several pros in terms of costs, you know, and things like that. Um, but it's it's more of matter a matter of being able to control as much of the supply chain as possible. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, I Andy Beth. All right, I'll jump in. Hi Beth. I think they're an AI company. Uh, you know, Tesla has been working on what they call full self-driving for a long time, which requires a really huge investment in AI. And uh, while they haven't yet arrived at the point where, on um, you know, they have full self-driving vehicles on the road, um, many Tesla owners have, you know, this partial uh, autonomous driving feature and have been using it for some time. So, uh, that they're using their fleet of existing customer owned vehicles as a way of beta testing that full self driving mode. So, they have an enormous data set. Um, but, you know, their competition, Waymo, particularly from Google, 
is more advanced in their application of full self-driving to robo-taxi fleets. So the, the possibilities of investing in AI and then finding market applications for that is pretty broad for Tesla. Uh, and it goes to robots, personal robots. And at this event, it was promised that there would be the possibility in the near future to buy one of the Optimus robots for about the price of a car. So call it under $50,000 mm -hmm. for a very you know, general purpose robot. Uh, that is an enormous market. Uh, there are a lot of people around the globe who would like to have some assistance like that. And as that matures as a marketplace, that price per robot will probably come down as I think Elon optimistically suggests to the twenty dollars to $30,000 range. And that makes it reachable. There are people paying $20,000 now for a bicycle. So uh, yeah. a robot is uh, well beyond that. The future vision of robo-taxis is, I think, pretty clear. And and the, the ramp to that is, is going to be, you know, pretty soon, like maybe not next year, uh, you know, and, and that's one of the issues that came up in this particular reveal by Elon is disappointing to investors that he's saying, well, maybe before 2027, mm -hmm. will they get to the robo-taxi vision? But before that time, he's saying, Tesla owners, once they turn on and, and, and I guess certify full self-driving, can use their vehicles in some you know, to-be-announced Uber-type software system that you would have to download on your iPhone or your Android and then you can call a Tesla to come and get you and get, take you someplace else. That may be one of the first ways that all of the current Uber drivers and Lyft drivers out there start to shift their purchasing away from Priuses and other inexpensive to operate vehicles and much less expensive than Tesla vehicles, may decide that it makes sense for me to buy a Tesla why? Because I can use that Tesla without me being in the vehicle to get my Uber and or Lyft, uh, you know, paid in. Sure. Yeah. I mean, and like it, it's, you know, the vision that Eli was talking about is that, hey, Andy, you got you got space. You have a, an area to do um, contactless charging, you know, on the farm or something like that. You know, start with one and uh, pay that off and then, you know, uh, buy another. You know, and then they now you have two cars that can go out and and do lifts in your, your in your area. You and you may end up having three, four, or five of these Teslas that are all doing passive income for you because they're all going out and doing ride hail in in your local area, whatever. And it sounds great. I mean, I can remember Amazon reaching out to me not for driverless, but Amazon reaching out to me and saying, "Hey, is there? Do you have any interest in owning a fleet of Amazon vehicles? You can start small. You can start in your area." You get a couple drivers. You start expanding, right? That like that was like I mean five years ago, six years ago. I remember getting an email saying like, "Let us know if you're interested in this. This is the minimum in you know investment." Blah blah blah, right? So it sounds great. A lot of what he talked about sounds great, but that's really where I think it ends for me. I'm with I'm I guess not saying you're not by the way, Andy, because you haven't said this, but I did find it to be a well highly produced slick presentation and really if i'm if i'm being honest with you what i what i saw between the lines what i was reading between the lines is like the robo taxi will be more than 2027 away because elon musk is perpetually wrong on his guesses i do believe though that you're right andy that the model threes and the model y's i think are the ones he mentioned um that would come first right there would be some ability but that's only going to be in some select cities. There's just simply not everybody. Every my town is not like Phoenix or places in California who have had these Waymos or other laws put in place because they've been building this up, or like Scottsdale, I think, in areas like this that have had Waymos driving millions of miles up to this point. Really, and so why would you why would you call a, a Tesla 
if you have had experience with Waymo being incredibly reliable. Incredibly and, reliable. We just right? saw that. That's right. Yeah. Also, to the point that, uh, to my point that Andy started, uh, <laughs> they have had full self-driving, not meaningful self-driving for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So then what is that? Full self-driving really? Full, actually full self-driving, right? Like you, you have a, you, like you, you have like a language identification problem to to move to something that actually works and mm -hmm. is full self driving. But to your question, the um, uh, Tesla is a data collection company. Yeah. They are a data collection company that has their data collection units uh, for purchase um, and uh, and their cars and their uh, like right like that is what they are and that. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. Come back to, for tomorrow's show because we're going to talk about spatial intelligence mm -hmm. and uh, and the ability to understand the world, right? And we have tons of literature, we have tons of video, and we have uh, we, so we have ways of of language models learning to understand static. Uh, concepts of the world or video concepts of the world uh tesla and x and xai is i think has an advantage even above the countries that do a lot of camera surveillance mm -hmm. i think tesla has a, a huge advantage because their data collection units drive all over the place like yep. full self-driving isn't the point um or at least for for this the amount of spatial awareness I know what the world looks like because I go through and I have like, I don't remember the number of cameras, but Tesla has something like eight cameras, 10 cameras. That may be an under. Yeah, sure. Some are LIDAR and some are radar, right? And all like there's different uh, technologies and stuff. Yeah. But it's regular participation in the world. Right. Yeah. And I, I remember seeing somewhere about the, um, we talked about this on the show. I, I don't remember what show we talked about this on, but the idea of, uh, AI needing to learn how to dig a hole and they're like oh yeah that's actually a problem that could be solved through Tesla cars and you're like what the hell is a hole have digging a hole have to do with Tesla cars you're like yeah because they sit at lights billions and billions and billions of opportunities over and collect data where part of that camera is watching people <laughs> dig holes and so if you need to turn around and teach the Optimus robot how to dig a hole Tesla probably has the data to pull that off and it's like it kind of that it blows your mind a little bit because you think, oh, Tesla cars are just like Waymo or anything else. All the data they collect make them better at driving cars. And then to your point, Beth, and again, we'll talk about it more tomorrow with spatial uh, spatial intelligence um, and uh, Fifi Lee, um, that, oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's so much more. They're capturing so much more of the world than just the blinders of the horse on, which is just go forward. They're facing forward, backwards, and in every other direction, capturing the world from every single viewpoint and angle that's possible to capture the world from, you know, so, and, and, and sometimes in multiple different uh, angles at the same time. So there might be six or seven different cameras capturing the same event, whether that's digging a hole or a car crash, you know, from, from, from different cars or whatever like that. So it's, I'm with you. I, and in fact, I'm glad you said about the data thing is when Jimmy, you were talking, I was like, yeah, you know, they really are. It's not their business model, but it is their business model. It's almost like Amazon with AWS. They were just AWS. Like nobody was really paying attention. Then somebody one day was like, is anybody looking at AWS and how massive that business is? And people were like, oh my God, you know, like it just, Amazon kind of built that slowly and surely. And all of a sudden, you know, AWS can easily be one of the top, top fortune 500 businesses. Um, when we get back to the AI side, I'm just curious, your guys' thoughts. Let's talk about Optimus really quick, because that was a huge letdown for me. And it was because of something that, I, that I'm certainly not the only person that said. It was just obvious, obvious to me right off the bat. Then when they were like, you know, Elon said something about like, we'll be kind to them because we're going to release them into the um, into the, the crowds. And there was lots of people there. The first time I heard one person interacting with it, whether it was the bartender or whatever they had doing there. I was like, oh, that's just somebody speaking through uh, a speaker. And I was like, oh, you know what? In 1986 or something like that, I went to Universal Studios and my brother and I got to sit in the kit car from Knight Rider. 
And the guy talked to us through a speaker in the kit car. And I'm like, this is not impressive. It was clear because the tones and the intonations of the voices were drastically different from Optimist, Optimist, Optimist. I'm like, I don't even know if they're trying to hide this. What I hated was that it wasn't said obviously that this is the case because truthfully robots walking around and not sucker punching people is a is a is a um you know a, te a tech advancement by itself the fact that they didn't fall over the fact that they were during crowds that in itself i think you could just lean on and say look at what we have built but then just like google it's like they it's like they can't help with themselves can't help themselves going too far and so what you end up having is a bunch of people, instead of talking about these dozens of upright robots standing in crowds with people and having interactions, everybody says, oh, you, you, you remote controlled a bunch of robots and you talk to them through a speaker and I'm not impressed. And I think rightfully so. That would definitely hurt if I was trying to be considered to be uh, an advanced AI company. I don't think that helps. But what, what, what was your guys' reaction to the Optimus thing? Because I, I like I definitely was disappointed in it. Well, this is this is what I was referring to earlier. Um, because I knew going in as soon as I s saw the opening scenes or whatnot, scenes, scenes, so, you know, um, okay, this is obviously produced. So I wasn't for me, I wasn't terribly surprised when when all of that come out. It's like okay, all right. I'll give you a little bit of leeway on that just because I know this whole thing was a setup from the beginning, mm -hmm. but I agree with you for the most part, Brian is um, if you were trying to highlight that you are a robot company, you know, then yes, be obvious. It's like here we are displaying their mobility, you know, kind of mm -hmm. features, sure. not the weird. We're trying to display its AI features or display its speech features or or any along anything along those lines. So, yeah, I think it was a misstep. Uh, I think they would have gotten everything they wanted out of it by just uh, even like pre-programming, you know, the like the walkout sequence. That was enough. Yeah, or the dancing. That that's they were yeah. dancing in what appeared to be a cage over like that was a little. That was a little vague. I I they were that, dancing yeah. in a cage, a lit up cage above the audience. I was like, yeah. that's an image. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. And, and that probably would have been enough where it wasn't trying to be the interactive part. Because as soon as you bring in people into a one-on-one -on -one interaction, that's going to highlight all of those kinds of potential, uh, you know, pitfalls. Yeah. Well, and the, there's like, there's use for robots that are remote controllable. Right. The, the what I'm seeing today is that the walking behavior was not remote controlled. They can ambulate on their own. Right. So, uh, so Brian, you said impressive that they were walking amongst people and not sucker punching. Maybe, uh, may the sucker punch uh, was not uh, <laughs> was under human control. The the balance on the walking out um, was uh, something that they can do. But the like. There are so many use cases in manufacturing and uh, that kind of stuff where the ability to have a, a fleet of robots that you can control, right, through a mocap machine. And maybe there's a switch or something, right? Like, yeah. oh, I'm going to number two because now we need to do this to tweak something or whatever that is. Like, that is that is useful. That's actually like <laughs> a pretty cool use case. It's just not the one they highlighted. So. Okay. Drones yeah. are great, right? They go places that are unsafe for humans and they report back so humans don't have to crawl through rubble and stuff like that. So I'm with you, Beth. Like, yeah, there's tons of there's tons of reasons why an Optimus robot would be helpful today if it could only do exactly what they showed it doing at the event. But you have the CEO saying everybody gets their own R2D2. Everybody gets their own Rosie from the Jetsons. And that's absolutely not what they were demonstrating. So you have somebody on stage saying one thing, and not just about the Optimus robots, but also about the uh, Robovan, <laughs> the Robovan, and also <laughs> I have to think about how he says it, the Robovan and the uh, the Cyber Taxi or Robo Taxi, depending on which one he used. He used both. Um, and just that that disconnect, and so you have people, well, for better or worse, listening to every word that Elon Musk is talking about. By the way, this is the same CEO who caught a rocket with pinchers over the weekend 
like at SpaceX, right? Like, I mean, so do I believe all of this will come true? Yes, I do, because there's no reason for me to doubt Elon Musk's vision, but in the long term. But when you're showing people this in the short term and saying this is a before 2030 type solution and you get everybody, you know, worked up and I go, yeah, but probably not. But also like, why? What? I mean, I know every you have investors or whatever, but wow, you're already so impressive. Tesla, you're already so impressive with everything you do with AI and all that. Why not just lean on that more? But it's like this need to show something that is smoke and mirrors. And I, I don't quite get that. I don't understand how that actually helps because all your fanboys and all your Tesla fanboys, they're going to get excited about it no matter what, you know? But the reality is the robo van, there's something similar to that already in Orlando, Florida. It's autonomous and it moves, it's a people mover in Orlando. Like it's been around for a while because Orlando's the city wanted to see that happen. And I'm sure it exists in other places too. That's just the one I'm aware of. I saw I saw some uh, negative commentary about the design of the robo taxi. So this is a new product in the Tesla lineup that is focused on doing the autonomous, uh, you know, on call vehicle market, and it's a coupe. Like that kind of surprised me and others. Like, why would it be so small? Well. Uh, I, you know, I was in Europe this summer as you were, Brian. And mm -hmm. when you go to Europe, there aren't big pickup trucks cruising yeah. the streets. All the cars are small on that scale, and and so I think that that's that may be sort of a future vision that all the vehicles that we want to put on the road, we want them to be smaller, and and that solves some of the parking issues. Not you know. Uh, even for these uh, self-driving vehicles, they have to stop somewhere. And you don't want them to take up a huge amount of space when they're idle. So maybe they're thinking carefully about the economies of space and and mass and all of those things. But uh, you know, they, they, that particular vehicle may not be the kind of vehicle I would want to call upon unless it was just me and maybe me and my wife taking a ride somewhere but i have a bigger crew than that right yeah. so, and i don't need the robovan to do it i just i just need a four passenger vehicle yeah yeah that, that's a good point was it only just two seats in the robot i thought so i, I, I but i looked at it i said oh i wonder because i thought the same thing andy like wow that's the the robovan is like they said 10 to 12 or something like that maybe more but it was something like that with seats and i think you could stand maybe like attack like a, a bus um, but then, yeah, to, for the second option to be two seats, but maybe to your point, maybe the data suggests that 80% of the time people only need a ride for themselves or a plus one, you know? So maybe it is just that we just, cause I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, that doesn't really solve my family's problem. But I guess Uber's not going away. Four passenger, six passenger, eight passenger Uber rides aren't going away. So maybe this is just a way to carve out that niche. And maybe the data says, Oh, 90% of the time, it's only one person or, or two. And, and the right. pullback is, you know, have a, you know, you can call on the uh, Tesla app, uh, the Tesla Robotox app. You can call a two person vehicle or you can call a, a Model S. Right. Yeah. Right. You, you'll, you'll be able to select among them. Yeah. So the, the other piece that I found really um, impractical is the ladybug wing doors. Right? Oh, yeah. So, like, when the door, I mean, it's cool. Yep, it looked impressive. Mm -hmm. But when you're in a car and the door doesn't close, you don't have, like, you could just reach out and grab the door and close it. Mm -hmm. The mechanics, at least of me, I don't know, maybe if you're really tall, have super long arms. Right. You're going to be able to, like, I, I just, I was looking at it like, wow, yeah. that looks like a lot of work when that doesn't close Plus, up. You know, a, a sliding door like on a, a minivan isn't going to hit anyone. Right. But a gullwing door like that yeah. you know, couldn't hit something if the, if the vehicle hasn't carefully positioned itself too far away from the curb. 
I, I, I imagine any of these somebody's stuck in the rain and they're just trying to get in the robo taxi really quick and get out of the rain. And the <laughs> to your point, the uh, the door is going like halfway up and somebody starts making their way to robo taxi. It's like, nope, I don't have the clearance. And it goes back down there. I'm like, okay, okay, back up to the curb again. And then it comes back up again. It's like, okay, I think I'm clear. Run to the taxi, get rained on some more. Halfway up, it comes back down. They're diving into the car. Yeah, there's you know there's going to be and I I think when I'm not super up on all the tests, but doesn't the Y or the X have the bifold doors that come more up and more like it's yeah. above your head? Yeah, one of them I would be does smarter, have that. That's right. Seems like that'd be a smarter. I, I'm with you, Beth, and, and that would be a smarter move for those types of vehicles because yeah, the Gullwing doors aren't practical always. They they look cool, but they look cool white in wide open spaces, not parking decks, and not you know yeah. places that are gonna be under awnings where you might be picking people up or whatever the case, or trees for that matter. I, yeah. I was I was more surprised that they didn't go with the sliding doors. Like yeah. if anyone's seen a seem minivan, be- that takes yeah. up the least amount of room. It doesn't spread out or up, and it doesn't have to go past the the body of the car in and of itself. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that probably would have been. Oh. A- better design maybe there's but, more mechanical the robo van clear. sliding door now i'm guessing myself was the robo van sliding doors it probably was right yeah the robo van is yeah Robovan. no Robovan. Robovan. you know honestly i listened to him in like two times speed because i was trying to get through the event the next morning and he said it and i was like i honestly don't know what they're calling this product i like i had no idea until matt wolf did his video and he's like he keeps on calling it the robovan i don't know why it's robovan and then when matt wolf said it i thought oh okay <laughs> because i'd never seen it written out the word written out i was like what what are they calling this yeah, like, I, i'm sorry thing? but you know no matter how many times elon musk says robovan or robovan or whatever yeah. he said Nobody's going to pronounce it any other way than robo van. Like, yeah. robo- well, well, I don't know about that, Andy. Might have some pushback. Remember, there is the whole GIF GIF thing. I oh, mean, that, 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 yeah. and he might put that? a memo that says everyone in Tesla has to call it a robo van. Yeah. Um, <laughs> By the way, it is only and always ever will be GIF, right? Just oh, but- right. So we're <laughs> <laughs> look, where GIF is a peanut butter. That's so what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And right, like this is the event. Hello, meet my child robot, my other child robo taxi, and my third child Robovin. Right? Robot. Like- yeah, yeah. Which which really is just the difference of target versus target, isn't it? Like, isn't it really just like are you really saying to say like I'm going to target or I'm going to target? You know, they have what I like over there. Um, okay, so as we're we're sort of talking about this, like, so the the question is, okay, <laughs> Jen. By the way, I want to say I want to put this up here really quick. Jen said someone clipped Brian out of context, saying there's no reason not to trust Elon's vision, which I think is hysterical. But on that point, because I think that's I think that's it's funny, but also here's my point to that. I do want to expand on that. Like, generally speaking, if you go all the way back before the Model S came out. And Elon Musk was saying he was going to do this stuff or go to space or send civilians into space or um, create a boring company that was going to pour under Las Vegas and create new tunnels Uh, or um, not as much. But the Hyperloop also something and it wasn't something he invented or whatever, but he was pushing for a while. I still think we might see like a Hyperloop, you know, with the magnetic lev and all that kind of stuff. There's still companies working on that. Um, These things, for the most part, have eventually come true and so i guess my perspective is oh i i have confidence in not him but the visions that he talks about and what we're seeing as an ai future i do believe that i do believe people will have an optimist or something like that that is a home healthcare type robot that can help move people in and out of beds get them to the restroom um put out their meds make meals or at least retrieve meals and bring it back to them if they're bedridden, um, sit with people, make sure they don't hurt themselves. Um, you know, like an attentive animal would or something like that. I think there's so many things that are going to happen that are good for society for this. I don't know when that's going to happen. Um, I don't know if Tesla is going to be the company that does it. Cause there's certainly many, many other ro- robotic companies that are doing similar things. Um, I do wonder though, 
is it just for investor is like the, was that the point because the the main thing coming out of this this um this we robot event was that actually the investors were not impressed so back to you jimmy like if the whole point of spending, I don't know, how much do you think this costs for them to put this on? A lot, right? Whatever that number is, it was a lot. They had the 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 whole Warner back lot or whatever they had, the WB back lot. Okay, it costs a lot of money. What's the point of the event if it's not as a publicly traded company to get investors excited about your competitor to Uber or otherwise, only to get to the other end of the event? And what I've read at least online is, no, their stock prices actually took a hit from this. This wasn't the this wasn't the slam dunk. I don't think it. I don't think it was really supposed to be an investor event. Or I'd okay. like to think they didn't plan it to be an investor event. Um, I think it was more of their attempt at uh, increasing the hype cycle around their product. People are having podcasts about it. But yeah, exactly. Look at that. We're talking about it for 40 yeah. minutes. Yeah. So so I, I, I think it's just part of part of that that hype cycle that we're seeing out of all big tech, right? They announced something. This is the concept car, you know, car show kind of thing for Tesla. Right. This is the latest product. Check out in a few years. And and you know, and there's the undertone, it's like, and in a few years, that's when you'll see it. But here is all the the flash and you know slick slickness that that people come to expect and maybe even secretly want uh, from uh, from all the the big tech hype. I mean, I I think in our position we're probably a little sick of it because we see it every day. But for people who aren't paying attention, this makes a big splash, and people are seeing cool robots and robo taxis and. You know all of these kinds of things, and giving them, um, you know, nostalgic uh, remembrances of uh, DeLoreans and Back to the Future, and all those kinds of things. So it's checking all of those forty-year-old uh, boxes for me. You know, yeah. um, you can tell I'm a fan of things. Um, right. So, so yeah, I could I could see what this is touching upon. Now, not to get a little out there, but I think everything that Elon has done in all of his major companies is put together a solution for his long-term visions like colonizing bars mm -hmm. right we can see uh everything even like the boring company that's to build underground uh transportation or mm -hmm. underground um you know housing or, or or whatnot that you can freely do on another planet without any regulation uh, number two, the robotics to help everybody do everything. Everything is autonomous. You can travel around in your Robovan, um, you know, uh, take you from place to place while you're exploring the planet, mining it, whatever, whatever they plan to. Starlink gets you all the communication you need for, you know, planetary communication. So everything is mapped and, you know, identified and and monitored and all those kinds of things. SpaceX, that's how you're getting there, you know, and they just had, like you had mentioned, they just had their big test for their uh, Starship, uh, which for me, I've always been a big space guy. So that was huge. Mm -hmm. So these are all these big, bigger boxes. So that's, I think, I think that Tesla arm, he's kind of created this method. It's like, here's all these support technologies that we need. We're going to need power generation. We're going to need to be able to do, you know, using solar cells or convert, mm -hmm. you know, matter or, you know, all those kinds of things, one thing into another. And so uh, I, I think that's that's what we're seeing is he's using hype cycle to get everybody excited about a product. That's the current, uh, you know, uh, the current few years and then putting all of these technologies together for a larger project down the line. I mean, he mentioned it like. 10 years ago, right? He was thinking 2040 for his Mars colony. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. We'll see. If 2030, everyone's got their own robo-taxi, um, great. Uh, I I don't know what that's going to look like in uh, <laughs> on the streets, but uh, that probably goes to like what Andy was saying is about, oh, if, every, if everyone was just traveling by themselves, the mass majority of people drive cars, it's just by themselves mm -hmm. and just make smaller cars and then you know the solution just might be oh here everybody has this car instead or like that's the idea 
but yeah, I, I think overall they're it's they're all components for for the 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 larger uh, the larger collective plan for them. So, do you guys think that in your uh, not lifetime, but your driving lifetime, whatever that is, at some point somebody says, "Hey, maybe don't drive more. <laughs> maybe take a robo taxi." Um, but do you think that? Uh, uh, in, in our driving lifetime that we maybe we'll go down to if we're a two person, two family, if we're a family with two cars, we might go down to one because the needs are met for that secondary vehicle by just the ease and use of always being able to get a robo taxi or a Waymo. I don't mean just robo taxis, but I just mean in general. Um, do you see that? Like, do, or do you see that my 13 year old daughter, you know, by the time she's uh, 25, would opt not to own a vehicle at all because kind of like kids today, it's too easy to just get an Uber and take it where you want to do. And so what's the point of me holding insurance on my vehicle and having to do all that stuff that's getting increasingly more expensive? If I can always get a ride that always takes me, whether it's autonomous or it's got a driver in it, you know, a la Uber. I think it depends on how close to the city you live. Okay. So- so if you're if you are in a highly urban environment, you know you live in a city or just outside the skirts of the city, then then yes, there's less and less need for you to have your own vehicle. If it becomes more, there's a reason why the electric scooters are really popular downtown, mm-hmm. right? So if everything's available and you can get it at any time, and you're only traveling within the city or the outskirts of the city then you're good to go. You don't need to have a vehicle, which I think is a good direction because, you know, this is just a different kind of mass transit, right? Um, Probably not as efficient as having a a, a bus or a subway or, you know, light rail or something like that. But it it does solve for a a congestion issue if nobody in a city needs to have a and they'll only have what is needed to support the transportation needs. Sure. Um, well, and, outside of that, suburbs and rural, that I think you're still going to want your own vehicle because if you're driving two hours to do anything, yeah, yeah. Means, I, I think you need your own vehicle. But the other point that Brian was uh, asking about in terms of needing a separate car, um, you like, it for to for families who have two different places to go mm-hmm. what what self driving offers is stagger your arrival times right okay so we're going to drive uh we're going to drive the kid to school mm-hmm. and then the car is coming back right sure. <laughs> and uh and then it's driving somebody to work and the car is coming going somewhere and charging itself during that time like you don't need parking um, if you can be more flexible in this context, you do actually need fewer vehicles. Yeah, no, it's a good point. I mean, look, at least in my limited family experience right now, as things are, it hasn't always been this way. Um, one of our vehicles, um, s- drives significantly less than the other one. And I don't know that everybody's that case, but I can definitely see where that particular vehicle who, whose job is only to go around town locally anyway. That's the only reason it's like, it solves all the other reasons. Um, I could see that car being replaced if, uh, I mean, hell, we could probably do it today. I live in a suburbia, so I could probably do it with Uber today. And I don't know if those, that cost works itself out, but it'd be interesting, uh, to do, uh, you talked about like rural and stuff, Jimmy. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm going to get a fleet of robo taxis, paint them John Deere green and, and, uh, and soup them up and, and, uh, and I'll, I'm going to make a killing out in, uh, more rural communities and stuff like that, uh, with some fun looking, uh, vehicles. Cause I think that's, that's the, that would be super fun. All right. Well, we should probably wrap this up. Uh, I'm sorry. Did anybody else have a comment? No, I was just going to say that that I feel like we've we've talked about this on a show, right? Your your car, it's your car, goes yeah. into the city, drops you off, and then logs into Uber, and your car is giving people rides the yeah. whole day, and then comes back. Like, yes, pay for yourself, but that's cool. Bring it into the family. You're one of the family now. Like, go earn. It sounds great until somebody smokes in my car and then I'm going to lose my mind. So, and I mean, there's worse things than smoking, obviously, too. I mean, Uber drivers have to deal with that. But I would, you know, an Uber driver's in the car can say, hey, get out. Or, hey, there's no smoking in a car. 
Uh, I don't know how quite that works in a future with robo taxis. If if somebody's there, you know, there's not a human there to monitor it. But maybe just going to be auto fines. Oh, we detected the carbon you know, monoxide like, uh, sensor, something. so we're charging you an extra fifty dollars yeah. for cleaning. Yeah. Thank you. That'd be the worst. <laughs> so just the idea. I mean, that's the whole reason why people say don't buy like used rental cars, right? Because they're not people. They don't own them, so they have no problem slamming them <laughs> over curbs and God knows what are ruining alignments and things like that. So I do worry about that. Like, yeah, sure. It's making you money. Also, it's only going to last three years. You bought this $30,000 car, which sounds great, but it will be trash in three years. And could you recoup that money because people were abusing it while they were in it or whatever the case is. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, as Beth said, tomorrow we have um, spatial intelligence, which does really kind of leap right off of this conversation so come back for that wednesday we'll have the news there's a um we're talking about open ai's real-time api and uh how that's really helping with business interactions and then friday is our two-week recap show uh where we'll be talking about all these events and more over the last two weeks not only this week but last week as well um don't forget you can go to the daily i show uh, dot com. You can go, I'll put up the QR code again. It's probably easier to do that or just go to the daily show.com. You can learn about all of our episodes on there. Uh, Jen had a good call out. We'll make some updates. Aaron, by the way, is making some uh, big, big changes to the website. So that's coming soon. Um, he's, he's doing a lot there, uh, but you can also sign up for the newsletter as well. Um, come on back and hang out with us tomorrow. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this conversation and uh, we'll see you for the rest of the week. Thanks to everybody in the comments, Gwen, uh, Jen, I uh, saw so, so everybody in there. Sorry, but thanks to everybody in the comments. Uh, we appreciate it and we read them. We read all of them. Uh, until tomorrow, guys. Bye.